Today on Be Better Golf, I have Jacob Bowden. You're going to want to hear his story because he went in just one year from a 14 handicap golfer all the way to a professional golfer, meaning that he was winning money against pros in professional long drive tournaments and professional golf tournaments, shooting in the 60s and winning money out on the mini tours, and he even advanced much further than that. So you're going to want to hear how he went from a 14 handicap all the way to being a pro and the process that went into that. He had some really, really interesting and famous golf voices that helped him along the way. And I think his journey can help us get better at golf. Here's Jacob. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Really exciting series of videos that this one is gonna be the start of with a golf pro from the East Coast that came out special to see Be Better Golf because he has some tips about distance because he has a certain experience throughout all the different golf pros that he's worked with and physical things that he's done that makes him one of the best people in the world to talk to about how to get longer while maintaining or increasing your straightness. But we're gonna get into his story a little bit. This is Jacob Bowden. Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's going great. Um, wonderful to be here and back in Southern California again. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of where the golf journey started for you, was in Southern California. It was, yeah. I'm originally from St. Louis, live, currently living in Detroit. And then I moved out to Cal. I was either going to, I wanted to pursue a golf career when I was 27 and was either going to move, I needed to go somewhere warm. So it was Florida or California. Sure. I knew one person in California. So I was like, <laughs> that's where I'm going. That's cool. And then I uh, moved out here in uh, two, December 2002. And then I had about 40 grand saved up and I was just going to try and make it, see if I, I was 14 handicap golfer, average length hitting. Uh, just wanted so to at like could, 26 years old, you started golfing or something like that? Uh, I started playing in high school, but uh, okay. um, my sports, this was my third sport. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I played basketball in college and I had a tryout for the Twins for baseball. And then neither of those turned into a career. So I worked a corporate job for five years. And then I had this uh, epiphany at the, uh, I was going to the PJ Championship and mm -hmm. just walking across the fairway. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, maybe I could do golf for a career. So I, right. I thought about it for a year and then uh, work got bad enough that it kind of gave me the courage to quit um, and take the 40 grand. Oh, yeah. regular, regular work got bad enough. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. It, uh, you know, when, you go, when you're working for a company and you go through a buyout and a buyout, the oh, culture yeah, right. can get really bad. So yeah. uh, that was uh, challenging, but it was fortuitous to help me have the courage to like take this leap. And then uh, when I moved out here, the buddy that I had, he was trying to make it in the film industry, mm -hmm. and um, they, there was like a big roommate situation, and they had uh, uh, some space in the dirty garage. Yeah. So I slept on a sleeping bag um, for 12 months and yep. bought a membership at Lost Canyons and just got up and golfed every day and um, just wondering, like, can I make it? And six months in, I cashed my first check. That's uh, a lot like my... Uh... <laughs> California story because I was out here on a sleeping bag in a living room for a long time before but and then I was you know I went to film school so I was trying to do the film thing cool. and then I got obsessed with golf when I was already out here you know so Where then I kind of blended originally? Uh, Philadelphia originally Philadelphia. Yeah, okay. yeah. Gotcha. All right. let's just talk about your journey from regular golfer to being good enough to win money against people who are doing it professionally so from being regular golfer to the first time you cashed you cashed in a pro event was how long uh, it, I started my journey January 1st, yeah. 2003, and then July 5th, I think. So it was about six months. Oh, wow. Yeah, it okay. was really quick. And tell, tell us about that tournament. How'd you do? Uh, it was actually a long drive event. Okay. Um, yeah. my, I was progressing so quickly uh, with my, well, my scores were coming down. Yeah. Um, but then I was progressing so much with my, my uh, distance that someone was like, I think in May, yeah, yeah. someone was like, hey, why don't you try long drive? I was like, long drive? What is that? What yeah, is right. that? Like, can, yeah. you, can you even do that? And then um, uh, I found out uh, the uh, about the qualifiers for the World Long Drive Championships and started doing a couple of those. And then I uh, won the Pinnacle Distance Challenge, which is a thing where you went up against the Pinnacle Distance uh, team. Um, oh, so they, they would travel around and, uh, and yeah, go so against local people. It yeah. was John Daly. Um, oh, wow. He was like the, the tour headliner. Yeah. Uh, he was on the team. And then there was like Jason Zubak, Brian Pavlet, a lot of the old. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the Sean the Beast from Fister, those was days. he on, on the. Uh, yeah, Sean okay. Fister was on there. Yeah. And they would just go around the country and then you would they would 
challenge people like oh, okay. hey i'll drive me yeah yeah um so how did that go i won oh okay <laughs> so be, you I beat, beat uh, all the pros well, i beat dan beaver oh yeah yeah i know um, yeah he dan, yeah, the famous trick shot artist yeah, he, and long driver he's yeah. got into trick shots yeah, since yeah. then he wasn't i don't think he was doing that then uh-huh. um but yeah he won this he's unbelievable World long yeah. drive championship just a yeah. uh, uh, a fun, fun show. If you ever get a chance to go to one of the <laughs> yeah. shows, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's That's super funny and yeah. it's fun to watch. Um, so yeah, I beat uh, Dan Beaver and then there was a, a two guys uh, won and then there was a playoff between the two of us to go to Vegas for the national one where uh-huh. you go up against John Daly. And uh, the uh, I think the nerves just got the best oh, okay. of me, and then the other guy uh, ended up beating me in the playoffs. Do you remember your yardage f- from uh, from then? Three eighty one. Oh wow! In two thousand four. Uh, two thousand three, and then the next best in that uh, venue. Uh, was two fifty seven. Oh my god! So like I, I just my drive yeah, yeah. just it, it was kind well, of you got to hit it. You got to you got to hit the grid though. Yeah, 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 and it yeah. was it was on a hole at a golf course in St. Louis, oh, okay. um, and it wasn't really that wide. And I just happened to flush one and caught a good bounce. And wow, um, it was kind of fun afterwards because at that time I was relatively unknown. Well, I was I was unknown in golf, yeah. and then uh, there was a bunch of people trying to trying to be there and show up and qualify for it. And I was walking around the crowd afterwards after I'd hit, and I could hear the whispers like, "Oh, did you hear that? Some guy hit a three and one." And I'm like thinking like. Oh. This like, is kind of cool. I hit like, a three to one. Are I, they talking about me? <laughs> right, that was me. And like, yeah, I'm, right. I'm like not saying anything, yeah. but it was fun to kind of like listen That's to the, cool. the, the crowd talk about it. From the experience of someone who's done it, because everybody, one of the stats that started Be Better Golf was this quote that I had heard that the USGA put out, that they did a study throughout the like lifetime of people's handicap, right? And they they had found that once people are playing golf for about three years, they hover around the same exact handicap forever until they eventually get older and then the handicap starts to fall off. Right. For, the, for the USGA, they were saying that it's very rare for somebody to not just like trim the edges a little bit or get a little bit better here or there, but like become a totally different golfer, which is something you were able to do. Yeah. So what, what advice can you give us or take us back to that time and uh, 20 years ago where you were really committed to becoming better. Like, what do you think is the key to getting better at golf? Um, I think part of it was... And hopefully we don't have to leave our job and move out of state <laughs> and do all that to do it, but yeah. Um, part of it was uh, setting a vision for yourself. Um, if you're just kind of like going out there randomly and I mean, you could find your way there, but like, I think it was, I, I was just like, all right, um, I'm here, point A, I want to go to point B, and it's like an extreme kind of goal. Yeah. Um, that's okay. But setting that vision kind of dictates the path backwards that you right. have to take to, and the actions that you have to take to get there. So the first part, I think, is just deciding who do you want to be, what kind of golfer do you want to be, mm-hmm. um, how good do you want to be. And I don't, there's nothing wrong with setting the best players in the world at some point said like, you know, I want to be the best player in the world. And that's, that's probably scary for a lot of people. So it's yeah. just, well, um, I'm sure when you came out here and told professional golfers and other, other people, it should be like, Hey, I'm not good. At, I'm not good now, but I want to be a pro golfer. I want to be really, really good. They're probably like, well, good luck. It's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. you, you get a mix of reactions when you like set a bold target, like right. you'll get some people that are kind of like, like a little bit threatened and like mm-hmm. uh, maybe a little like it, it, it makes them uncomfortable because sure. maybe they're not doing something. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So some people like will, will like maybe knock, try and knock you down or something. But then other people are like really inspired by it. like, wow, this is really exciting. Like, yeah, this is awesome. Like, tell me more. Like, how can I be a part of this? Yeah. Um, and it, at that, you know, that's where you got kind of got to have a little bit of thick skin and just, you know, this is what I want to do. I don't care what other people are going to think. Like, right. let me just f- do it and figure out how to do it. Um, and, and don't listen to the naysayers or, uh, uh, and just, you know, stay, stay attached to your vision of what you want to do. So tell us more about then technically like what you're doing in that first year that you were really after it, that maybe we could learn from. Um, fortunately now, um, there's a lot more data and a lot more information about ha- how and technology um, about how to become a better golfer. So yeah. I think it's actually 
knowing what to do is easier now. Mm -hmm. You still have to do it. That's that's the hard part. Um, but knowing what to do is a lot easier now. Back then, it was like um, I just kind of like tried to get cap get some kind of like data about where I am. I'm a 14 handicapper. I'm like, if I'm hitting past the 225 marker at the driving range, that's like really good. Right. And like then I'd like look at a tour player, and they're like this scoring average and. Um, I tried to calculate the the handicap levels. I don't mm -hmm. think any. I don't like recall break the, down the different skills of golf yeah, into so handicap like, level. Yeah. Um, try and get some markers that I can some benchmarks that like here's where I am, here's where they are. Let's connect the dots and figure out like how, how do I how do I cover this gap okay. and how do I cover it quickly because mm -hmm. um, I wasn't working. I was living off forty thousand in savings, just trying to go a really long way really fast mm -hmm. so i was just i was willing to take some risk i think mm -hmm. that other it's it's like if you want to be better you either need to do the same thing that other people are doing and do it better or do something just completely different mm -hmm. that kind of gives you an advantage and, and right so there's a, a little bit of risk taking right. i think um, yeah. but it, for me it was like i felt like it was calculated risk taking mm -hmm. okay. so then when, when you were out in california then you got the opportunity to meet and directly work with Mike Austin. Yes. So, so tell us a little bit for people who might not know, like who, who is Mike Austin and then tell us how you guys ended up. So yes, uh, together. this is, I'll, I'll, I'll get to like who Mike Austin, Mike Austin basically hit a 515 yard drive when he was 64 years old. Yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, with the technology in the 70s. Yeah, with a wooden head, right? Uh, wooden, uh, persimmon wood, steel shaft, like yeah. I think it was 43 and a half inches, mm -hmm. ballada ball, just right. all, all the technology. In Las Vegas at a senior. In Las event. Vegas, yeah, yeah. In, a, in a tournament. Mm -hmm. um, but so this was one of the things, I was out there a month and I was just trying to figure it out on my own at first. And then as we were just talking about, some people get inspired by what, what you're, yeah. when you start talking about like, oh, hey, what are you doing? I'm doing this. Oh, cool. And this guy, uh, Dan Shogger, who had just retired uh, from building uh, sets in the, the film industry, he was yeah. he built sets like on Little House on the Prairie and other, mm -hmm. sh other shows like that. He was just retired from that in his early 60s. And he was thinking about trying to take a crack at the senior tour. Uh -huh. And he was there that day at Lost Canyons to uh, see, like, should I get a membership here? And okay. we were, it was blowing the winds were blowing like crazy. Yeah. And like I was, uh, I went to make a backswing and then all of a sudden a gust of wind came in, blew, literally blew me backwards. Yeah. And I'm not easy to blow over. I'm yeah. 6'2", 225. Yeah. And I would have hit Dan behind me, but he also got blown back. <laughs> right. So then we just kind of started talking. The only about, two nuts out on the, yeah, the, the we, range. We, we bonded over yeah, that. Right. And he's yeah. like, you know, this is, I think it's really cool what you're doing. So he was in, he was one of the ones that was inspired by what I was doing. He was like, hey, I want to be a part of this. Let me coach you for free, and I'll also work on my game to try and like take a crack at the senior tour. I'm like, yes, sold. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then as we were chatting, he was like, hey, by the way, have you heard of this Mike Austin guy? And I was like, mm, that sounds familiar, but I don't. But no, like, right. who is this? And then he told me it was this guy that hit the 515 yard drive. And then all of a sudden, this is like, oh my gosh. When I was a kid, my mom would put me in my room so she could have alone time, and, and my, me and my brother in our rooms. And we had to either take a nap or we could read. Yeah. And I would read the old Guinness Book of World Records. And I remembered reading Mike Austin, 64 years old, yeah. 1974, US National Senior Open, 515 yard drive. What? Yeah. That was How a famous that book possible? with the, the two fat twins on the motorcycles. Like world's fattest twins. I, I had that. Oh, that, yes, that yes, right. yes. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> so I thought it was just kind of fun. And then I was like, holy cow, like I'm read about this as a kid. And like now you're me taking this, taking this risk, taking this chance to, to like do something really kind of, kind of wild. All yeah. of a sudden it drew to me mm -hmm. something that was going to help support me going from here to here. Yeah. And uh, so we went over to, Dan was friends with Mike. Mm -hmm. so because of his carpentry background, he would go over to Mike's house and work on Mike's roof uh, and do like things around the house in return for Mike, like yeah, give giving him, him lessons, uh, golf yeah. lessons and kind of training Dan to become a pro basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so then I went over to Mike's house and there's all this memorabilia. There's all these, this, this Guinness 
awards all over the walls and stuff. Yeah. And then uh, shortly after that, Phil Reed, um, uh, who's been on your channel mm -hmm. uh, and who, like you've done the putting book uh, yep. with. Um, Be Better Golf Putting be, System, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Phil was working on a book about Mike Austin later that year. And then I had just won the Pinnacle Distance Challenge. And then Phil, uh, I was driving back across the country to California after going to some long drive events. And um, uh, Phil reached out to me and they're like, hey, I'm writing a Mike Austin book. Do you want to meet up? Okay. Um, I live in Long Beach. Like, come come down and, and meet and we'll, let's, let's talk about Mike Austin. And, okay, and, cool. And what that uh, has done for the start of your golf career, basically. Right. So it was super, super cool how everything kind of came together. But it all started uh, going back to what you were saying. It was like, who do you want to be as a golfer? Like, yeah. so pick something out. Like if you want to like get better, decide how good you want to be, and then that kind of dictates the path. And then all of a sudden, once I started moving uh, along that path and decide, made the, the intention to follow yeah. that, then all of a sudden, everything that I was needing was like coming towards me. Right. Um, you start seeing real progress towards it, and it gives you like a yeah. boost. You're like, and it's oh, not wow, to this say that it's yeah. it's not a perfect journey. Like sure. those first few months, I was like, I was living in a dirty garage on a sleeping bag. My my hands weren't used to hitting all those balls. Like I was my hands were bleeding and blistered right. and I was so And buckets and like, of balls were really expensive back then. Uh, like, there fortunately, like memberships I, for balls like the right? 40 grand I bought, I think the membership I bought was about four, four, four or 5,000. Oh, okay. And it came with balls. Oh, okay. So nice, I was nice. fortunate to like be yeah, able to smart. not have to like also pay balls. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have more with Jacob coming up, including the next video that we're going to do that you're going to hit the subscribe button right now to see is going to be all of his distance tips. Jacob, uh, at one point, was one of the longest drivers in the world and still one of the longest drivers in the world, probably for his age. So, uh, but he really is keyed in, and this is really why I wanted to talk to him, about things you can do like on your own without even a coach, things that you can do at home, things get, that you can do on the range that are the, the real things that separate the wheat from the chaff when it comes to getting longer, more usable distance. That's what we're gonna do, do next. If you wanna see that video, right away click the join button and i'll have the raw footage from all this stuff that we do with jacob for uh, be better golf members if you guys are interested in contacting jacob they can get in contact with you how uh my website and social is all just jacob bowden and jacob with a double a okay j a a c o b bowden b-o-w-d-e-n website social it's all all okay dot com yep instagram jacob bowden all com. Okay, right. at jacob bowden.com or cool. at jacob bowden Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Bye.